Hey Clashers and welcome back to another banger of a match because this one is going to be no legs facing off against KOG. So this one is going to be a fun one to watch hopefully. And we have already the first attack going so let's jump right into it. Let's see what they're going to come up with and we have bats starting things off. They're like, like he's like their, their starting player for no legs which always is attacking first. He really prefers the air attacks typically like E-Dragons which he's running I think in Legend as well, sometimes in Fern Dragons as well. So let's see how we can do with this. Taking out the Town Hall nice and easy in the beginning. The great thing about this is that he's not looting out the Clan Castle, which is really, really key. So not looting out the Clan Castle, and now it's all about the funneling. He's actually using a couple of Rocket Loons to create pathing for the E-Dragons. And now it's all about the E-Dragons getting into that core of the base. And it's, it always looks so, it always looks so cool with the base just suddenly disappearing with those E-Dragon chains. So let's see if that's exactly what's going to happen right here. Yes, he still like a ton of um, spells left. He's protecting his E-Dragons on the right side. And now we have those chains coming in and those chains, they're looking so deadly. But we have the king and the queen on the top left circling the base. The next freeze onto the royal champion to protect his E-Dragons. Those defending heroes can deal a ton of damage. But now those dragons kind of split up and yet again a nice freeze and this air defense is going down to the e-dragon on the clan car so the queen is going inside she should walk on uh, on the outside again soon royal champion is coming in from the right side that's interesting choice right there i guess he wants to take down the single phone tower as soon as the single phone tower is going down i think he has a really good shot at tripling this base but the e-dragons are slowly dying out the royal champion still having her ability so what can she bounce with this ability the queen on the other side is still alive with her ability as well so this is not looking too bad to be honest the warden in the middle of everything trying to support but the royal champion now is about to die with no ability left and the queen now is taking over and now it's kind of depending on the pathing of the queen she should go into the compartment right in front of the scatter shot which means this should be a triple but it's kind of depending on the pathing. If she's going like completely random against the wall, this might be a fail. But as long as she's going around the corner and going for this bitter hut, it should be all right. And she and she's going there. That's awesome. Which means this is going to be the first three star off this match. Bats is doing it again with those e dragons. It was kind of close at the end of the day. We have to say that like it was really close um, at the end. But hey, a triple is a triple. That that's everything what counts. And now we have the first three star on our hands. So let's see if KOG can get their three star in as well. And let's see if they can, yeah, keep up with a no leg. So now we have the first attack and that's actually a Pekka smash. That's, that's really cool. I feel like the Chinese community is one of the only communities which are still doing those Pekka smash attacks still, which I feel, I, I, I love this because I think Pekka smash right now is super underrated. A lot of people saying ground is dead or whatever. But with having so many air expos nowadays, I feel like actually ground got a buff. Like without getting a buff, but like with the base designs, everything is changing. So ground got a buff on that regard. Um, so let's see how that works. Let's see how that works against the base of Ruin. Um, he's warden walking the outside. Uh, those bitter huts are being hella annoying because they're repairing up so quick. And this warden takes so long. Take a look at how long... This one takes just for the wizard tower. He has already taken 50 seconds. Already 50 seconds are taken. That's crazy. That's really, really crazy. Um, this is so long. Now he's... Oh, that earthquake was genius. So what this earthquake is doing is it's damaging all of the builder huts. Which means those builders have to repair their own huts first. And then they can concentrate on the town hall. Otherwise... This one walk would have been never possible because, uh, well, those those builder huts would have just non-stop healed that town hall. So really, really interesting approach with that earthquake, making sure that everything works. And now we have the smash slowly, slowly, slowly coming in. More healers. So far, none of the healers are really following, to be honest. Needs to use the warden ability maybe soon. So far, he's still delaying it. Now the warden ability, perfect timing um, as he's approaching the core. A ton of black mines are over there, but they're all getting blocked by that warden ability. Back and earthquake. That's an interesting choice. There are the arc riders from the top side. This is looking really, really good. The nato trap over there is doing nothing. I guess that was against the blimp or something like that. The chest farmer on the top right is being kind of annoying, but still the royal champion is there to clean things up. At this point, there's not much left standing. The scatter shot. 
No problem. Yes, the Royal Champion with, I think, still two freezes left. And the Queen is still alive. The ton of Pekka are still alive. This is looking really, really good for KOG. And I think this should be their first three star as well. The only thing which could be like the, the defense is time. But to be honest, 40 seconds left. And he has the Royal Champion ability. And he has the Queen ability. I, I think it's going to be rough to, to defend that one. But hey, let's see. Maybe there are some some ground skeleton traps to delay things even further another freeze now to protect the royal champion making sure that she's getting everything down the queen of the core still taking out the expert which is great for him and then with the royal champion ability i think that should be all right yes there's some cleanup to place but hey that's that's no difference that's no different whatsoever this is going to be a three star so we're tied up after the first um first attack each so this one's going to be an amazing match uh, that's always great to have those teams starting off with great attacks and now we have Reen coming in and he's okay he is using the strategy which I think I posted a couple of days ago uh, on YouTube which is the Inferno Dragon Dragon Rider combination I think that's pretty strong um, I talked about that with him and he said the huge benefit of this over for example like the Dragon and Dragon Rider combination is that we have the Inferno Dragons, you can spread them wider. Like you have a wider spread of Inferno Dragons. That's better for those. For Dragons, it's better if you have them compact together because they're dealing then, like it's more more efficient. With Inferno Dragons, they're beaming up and everything. So this, if you can spread them a little further, it's totally fine. So that's the biggest difference. So if you want to just spam those, spam them in, I think Inferno Dragons and Dragon Riders are better because they have a wider spread. But so far, let's take a look if that's actually looking good or bad. The Hound came out, which is not good for him. Uh, the Blimp is flying, is the Blimp. The Blimp is reaching that town. We had already so many um, Town Hall Blimp baits. So it's always important to watch if that's actually um, going to connect. But that is going to, for this for this attack. Town Hall 4 Red Mines in the core. And Final Dragons are taking down the back end. He has did the Royal Champion left with a couple of more freezes. And that's what we said. This base as well has so many Mucha and Furman Towers that whenever you you want to bring like skeleton spells, things like that, they're just not as efficient as freezes. And this right now is looking really good. The Queen is staying alive for now. She's getting healed up again with this Unicorn. The Dragon Riders on the back end are doing a great job. Can this scatter go down? If this scatter is going down by the Royal, like from the Royal Champion, then everything is looking alright because this scatter is out of reach for the Queen. Everything else, the Queen can just reach it and easily clear it out. The Warden with that Inferno Dragon at the top side. We have the Wizard. That Wizard was clutch. That was, Wizard was OP on the outside. And this means this is going to be yet again another 3 star for Reen from No Legs right here. Really nicely done. Really, really nicely done. And now it's all about the answer of KOG. It's going to be time for KOG to answer. And they're coming in. Okay, with that blimp. And they're bringing the Super Witches. That's interesting. I mean, to be honest, I mean, even though I hate Super Witches. So, like, I think they're just not as strong. I think on those anti two star bases, they're a really good, really good option. Uh, the reason for this is... Um, why well, I think they're pretty good against those ring, or like those those anti two star bases. It's because no one is defending that. Like those anti two star bases are designed to defend, like in legends most of the time. Um, so it's like the classic things like e dragons, um, smash attacks, which are similar but not the same as super witches. Um, so let's see how we can do this. So far, the entry is looking great. He's doing a queen walk instead of a warden walk, and now even adding the warden, so just to make things even more quicker. But he already invested one minute roundabout before he's even starting with the super witches, which sometimes might be a little bit of a problem because time is always an issue. Enemy queen should engage soon onto the queen. No, it's, she's actually hitting the owl first, so this means there's no rage, no freeze whatsoever needed, which is great. And now those Super Witches are coming in. Nice Kokodun as well. Maybe another Kokodun in there as well. And then the jump is leading everything inside. There's... Oh, that Kokodun was worth it for sure. Oh, that was actually double Kokodun. So that's already two Black Mines out of the... Out of the um, defensive toolbar. Deleted. And now we have the King slowly approaching that single Furman Tower. A nice Skeleton spell. That's, that's really, really cool planning. Knowing that a Freeze would not last that long. So using the Skeleton spell to make sure that everything works out. He not, now needs to use the Freeze still. But still, the Skeleton spell tanked some nice uh, some nice time right there. The Queen and the Witches in the court took down the Town Hall. That's now the advantage from Super Witches over Smash, obviously. With being easily just like, you can just put them into the core and then at some point use the warden ability for the poison. But 
they're not running into the poison right away. So that's like the huge advantage from the Super Witches over other Smash strategies. But hey, so far this looks great. The Royal Champion with her ability is still alive. Uh, you can use that at any time. The King on the outside still funneling. He has 45 seconds left. Royal Champion is backtracking, so the, even, even the defenses are getting taken down by the top side, which means the Wizard has no problem whatsoever to take everything out and clear things up. 35 seconds, that should be alright, right? Like, there's no chance in this world that this is a defense, or can this somehow be defended? I mean, the Royal Champion died, so... No, the Royal Champion is still alive. Never mind, I was just... I just missed the Royal Champion somehow. The Royal Champion is staying alive, and this one's going to be an easy 3-star for Kian. And now we have no legs answering. They need another three star to put up pressure against a really, really strong KOG. And now it's all about this dragon attack. He's using dragons with one dragon rider. That's interesting to see. One dragon rider only. Um, so far the royal champion early. Taking down the skeleton. Now another skeleton spell. Um, using that. The Valkyrie to funnel. Which is not working that great. Was he not able to bring another... No, he had already Rocket Loons and he already had the Super War Breakers, so no chance to bring like Stinky Goblins or anything like that. So he had to invest a bit more about like getting the King into the base, using the Queen ability now, luring out the Royal Champion, putting down or destroying the Defending Skeletal, which is a great value right there. And now the King taking on the Eagle, and then we have the Dragons in from the bottom right side. Needs to make sure that he's blimping that town, obviously, um, with the Dragons and everything. Now sending a couple of... Wait. Why? Why is he not... Okay. No! Oh my goodness. What is he doing? Why? Why would you send in the blimp from over there? That makes no sense whatsoever. This tunnel is not going to be um, taken down. What? Why would you why would you blimp from that angle? Like he had an easy shot at this. He ha he's not even using like any like bad attack or whatever. So he could just blimp the town hall with like a dragon clan cast and could easily take that out with an with another rage. He has so many spells with him. He has another rage right now. He could have used the rage for everything. This is a big, big question mark for me. Like, why did he use the blimp right there? This made mo no sense to me at all. Like, he has so many spells. Let's just, just take a look at this base. Just imagine that this tunnel would went down in the beginning and the pathing everything would have lead the dragons through the core. This base would have been wrecked. Like, just take a look. Even now, could this still be a triple? Could he still save this? The... Okay, the... The Rocket Loon is doing a great job of like taking down the next couple of buildings. The dragons are being stuck on that king. Archer Tower is taking down the Rocket Loon. And now it's all about those dragons. Yeah, like, I don't get that. I, I really, I'm really surprised about that, about that blimp. I feel like without that blimp, this would have been an easy crushing overkill. The plan was OP. The hero part, just take a look at that hero part. Taking out the eagle, taking out the scatter and the royal champion. And then the pathing on the other side with the, with the other, like with his own royal champion offense. This plan looks OP. But this one is now going to be a time fail just because he went for that risky blimp. We know how many times those blimps are getting baited for the town hall because they are so strong. And he's running right into that bait and completely destroying the chance for three stars. That's unfortunate. 91% right there for no legs. Whew, that's an unfortunate one. That's an unfortunate one. But now KOG, I mean, that's always like the, the important thing. Like whenever you're defending, you need to use that on offense as well. Like otherwise it's kind of like useless, right? Like if you're defending nonstop, but then doing bad on offense, that's not really worth it. So you, they need to make sure that they're using this now and they are bringing the queen charge hybrid but not like a normal queen charge hybrid no instead they're bringing the lightning queen charge hybrid that is an interesting combination i have seen this many many times um recently from a couple of teams and i feel like right now it might be the strongest it might be actually the strongest hybrid right now for competitive play because this is especially if P if, if teams are not expecting this this kind of approach it's incredibly strong um, and if you have most of the expos on the other side of the base, or you can, can take down the expos with your lightnings whatsoever, it's a really, really strong strategy. So let's see, as long as there are no ton of like spring traps against this, which is not the case. Typically, you're not really doing like a blimp 
uh, Queen Charge Hybrid, whatever, with with Lightnings. Like that's not the classic approach. So typically you're avoiding Spring Traps with this. And um, well, let's see. Let's see if we can make this work. One minute and 52 seconds left. Now it's all about this hybrid. Can the hybrid take down the eagle and the scatter and everything quick enough? Can this queen stay alive? Because this is the only rage which she has right now. And there's this town hall coming out. The eagle is starting to shoot. And now we're starting with this king. Starting in the funnel. He has no siege barracks, what siege barracks whatsoever because he used the siege barracks nice and early. Queen ability had to be used. Now it's all about so far. Let's take a look at the spring traps. A couple of miners are flying away. But except that, not too many springs right there, which are kind of, to, which is kind of to be expected, to be honest. Like, I mean, obviously, no one is defending um, this type of this type of hybrid typically. Now the warden ability, perfect timer right there against the enemy king as well. Queen is um, using, uh, he's using the invisibility spell onto his queen to make sure that she is staying alive. And as long as this core. Inferno Tower is taken down. This is looking really, really good. Like the back end scatter and uh, the back end bomb tower is getting healed up again with this heal spell. And guys, I think he did it. He has one freeze left. The queen obviously is yeah, it's not in the in the greatest state of health, but sh there's no more expos whatsoever. So the queen has no threat on her whatsoever. The royal chain ability is still up. This is going to be an easy, easy three star for him. Finishing in style. And hey, Queen Charge Hybrid. Nope, that's not dead. Right here. Really nicely done. Really looking forward to seeing more creative attacks like this. I really love that. Um, because, like, it's not that easy to bait. And to be honest, not too many people are doing it. So if you're baiting an attack like this, <laughs> that's. I don't know if that should be a priority. But either way, now we have the CUC hacker coming in. And he's using the Super Witches as well. We just saw it already how strong it was against the. Um, the one base of no legs and now it's all about them using it on their own on offense can he make this work the first rage is getting used there are no lightning spots ever um, if you take a look at the hit rates of super witches right now overall they're pretty low I think overall I would, I would say 30% hit rate right now um, but the hit rate actually of super witches without lightnings is way higher. So it's like right about like 10% hit rate maybe with lightnings. And then like without lightnings, it's actually like something like 50% even. So I think this has a pretty good shot. Let's see if he can somehow make this work. He has the blimp with him as well. I hope that they're not going to go with this risky blimp again. Maybe... I don't know, maybe just send it with the Super Witches and use the Warden Ability in combination. Not really sure, to be honest, but um, I don't know. Like, they already went into one of those Town Hall baits. So let's see if uh, it's going to happen yet again. The King is funneling the... Okay, there's the Blimp coming from the right side. Is the Blimp making it? Is the Blimp... Yep, yep, so far so good. And yep, there we go. Blimp is reaching its target. And now it's all about the core. Can those Super Witches stay alive? Can the King funnel enough at the bottom side? Push those super witches into the right direction. The jump spell is not connecting the compartment where the super witches are in right now. And now like the, where the queen is in, in right now. And this queen needs to redirect right. And not go for that stupid wall. Royal champion. Push her back. Taking down the wizard tower would be awesome. And that's what is going to happen. And the queen is actually backtracking which is awesome for him. Next rage. Freeze for the back end. Royal champion on the right side is pushing. Is helping. One minute left for 40 seconds. Um, the other way around. One minute for 40%. That's what I wanted to say. But he's picking up percentage quickly right now. The queen needs to stay alive. The royal champion would be awesome to stay alive. Because this is like constant DPS. Minions are already on the right side. Which are awesome right now to clear things up. Royal champion ability. 40 seconds left for 30% of this base. This is going to be a really really crazy finish queen ability not available anymore because it used it to get through the wall royal champions clearing things up and this tesla on the left side needs to getting taken down like this if this get if this uh if this tesla is taken down the royal champion is staying on the right side cleaning things up 50 se 15 seconds this is this is getting really close i mean the goat storage should go down the super giant skeleton thingy is helping oh my goodness this is going to be so close two one oh my goodness that was close okay that was super close but this three star is keeping no legs in the match and now it's kog again
And they are coming in with some Lightning Lalo. Ooh, okay, okay, let's see how that works. I mean, wow. I mean, this match is crazy right now. This match is crazy. KOG is still perfect. No legs, 191% fail. And now King and Queen are supposed to push into that compartment to take down the King, take down the Queen. Get into that compartment. That's what it's all about. Enemy defending king is getting a gauge. Perfect ice golden freeze timing right there. Defending queen now soon as well. King of Blinchy maybe used soon. There we go. Another perfect ice golden freeze right there to take down, like the, to make sure that the defending queen is having no chance whatso whatsoever. There's actually a super mini clan castle in there. He has not used the poison just yet. He's just letting the super uh, minions fire away onto that yak and onto the king. And now we can use the poison soon, use the queen ability soon to take down those those super minions. And now he's about to solve the ladder. I guess from the top side, even though this looks super risky. But I think this time around he's going to use the blimp for that town hall. Just to make just to make sure that this town is going down. And there are a ton of expos surrounding that town hall, but all of them are set to ground. So they're not making any difference right there. Okay. Warden is still at the top side. No, Warden is now getting placed perfectly today. I thought the Warden was inside the big group of the top side. But there's the Royal Champion actually. Perfect delayed Warden. Now the Blimp. Now Headhunters in there as well for the Royal Champion. Freeze, Warden ability. Not catching the inner core of the Loons. And not catching the Royal Champion either. Blimp is making it. But I feel like the Blimp is too late. Or like, yeah, the Blimp is too late at that town. He needs the Rage up. But this Rage is leading everything into the town as well. Or surrounding the town hall. The bl Oh no! The, the NATO trap. The NATO is actually keeping the Yeti Mites away from the town hall. Now finally the town is going down. But I feel like the town hall did so much damage. He has one Lightning, one Invisibility spell and one Haste left. Using the Zap. And using the Haste. Back and Invisibility spell. Maybe. May when is he using the spell? The Warden is... Now for the Warden with the Invisibility spell. That would be... Nope, that wouldn't... What? Okay, that was too late. Yeah, but that's actually a defense. Now it's all coming down to how many percentages can he get. Because 91, remember that number. 91 was the number of no legs. And if they're now going to be lower than that, then no legs has everything in their own hands going into the last attack. If they 3-star, they're going to win this match. This is now 90%. Oh, wait, is this exactly tied up or was I wrong? No, this is one building, 90 to 91. This is 1%, one building difference. We can see it right below me. Wow, that, that is close. Okay, now we have Beezus coming in and he's coming in with the Queen Torch Dragon Rider. Such a strong strategy right now. Incredibly strong. A lot of people are using it right now. He's starting with the Yeti Blimp. He's waiting. Queen, place that stupid Queen. What What are you waiting for? What is he waiting for? That is so incredible. He is using 20 seconds to just deploy his queen on a queen charge dragon rider attack. Such a time consuming attack strategy. And he is using 20 seconds to wait to place his queen. That is... That is interesting. <laughs> Let, let's put it like this. I hope this is not going to be a time fail. I really hope that that's not going to be a time fail. I mean, the queen now is taking down the defending lava hound and then approaching finally the queen. I mean, uh, the 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 eagle compartment. I mean, at this point, there's already 50 seconds gone, and the queen finally now is actually getting into the first compartment. Ooh, this is going to be a rough time for that queen charge. I feel like eagle has been taken down. That's great. Um, this gold storage is completely denying him the next wall break. If he wants the wall break into the core, which would have been awesome, like take getting a wall break now into the core would have been OP, just like to target the compartment to the multi inferno tower, but he cannot use that right now because oh, and that wall break was way too early, anyways. Um, yeah, this won't work now. So now the queen has to beat her um, through the wall, like beat through that wall. Now that at the top side, the dragon riders are starting, and now it's all about. Wait, where is he? The Royal Champion? Why is he not using the Royal Champion? Like, there are so many air skeletons and nothing is taking down the air skeletons. There's, take a look at the damage of those air skeletons versus the Dragon Riders. What is he doing? No way. Now the NATO. He has one rage left. 
Warden ability now, Queen ability now is uh, there as well. Queen is dealing, like taking a ton of damage. And Royal Champion now from the bottom side. I guess he's just having too many time problems. So this is why he needs to start from the bottom side. Yeah, everything is going into the Town of Poison. I guess he just wanted to make sure that the Royal Champion is not stuck in that Town of Poison as well. But this now, I mean, he has not much cleanup troops left at this point. The Royal Champion is trying her best. Like, the Royal Champ needs to stay alive. He needs to protect her whenever he can. And now, oh, this is going to be so close. 30 seconds. I mean, power-wise, the Queen is staying alive, right? Like, the Queen is staying alive. There is no problem whatsoever with the power. But the problem is time. And we said that in the beginning. This could have been, a, like, this would be a huge game changer with the, with the earlier start. Now the Owl, is he going to protect the Owl? He's freezing up perfect to get the fire onto the Royal Champion. And has, having still the invisibility spell left, which is doing for Royal Champion as well. Guys, this is just a time fail. This is the 20 seconds which he delayed the Queen. This could have been a 3 star. This could have been the win for No Legs. And now they have to rely on the defense. Now they have to rely onto their defense versus KOG. Whew, this 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 will be uh, an intense finish, and we have Queen Shot Dragon Rides on the other side as well. Juicy P is starting in, and he's starting with the Queen right away. Huge fan already. Royal Champion to take down um, the Inferno Tower and the Scatter Shot. It seems like Queen's supposed to walk into the Town Hall, taking that out, and then well. I guess the Royal Ch wait, um, then the Dragon Riders into the Sweeper. I, I don't like that too much, but I guess it's okay. Um, he has to do the King left as well. Let's see where exactly he's going to use that. The Royal Champion is looting out the Clan Castle. It's a ton of Archers and a couple of Super Minions in there. Classic Clan, cla clan Castle right now. Um, poison in there as well. Super Minion is firing away onto that Queen. I think there's another Super Minion in there as well, which has not looted out just yet. There is the Kokodoon. And he's actually bringing the king in there as well, which might be a good move. I'm not really sure just yet, but I feel like the king pushing the queen onto the other wall, or pushing that queen onto the other wall, and making sure the queen is not running into the town of poison. This is what it feels like right now. Let's see if that's exactly what is going to happen. Freezing up the, the town hall, king ability in there, and the queen is taking down the next super minion right there. And now the dragon riders can get started. We have the Slammer, we have the Dragon Riders left. This is looking really, really good as an opening right now. Another Rage to speed things up and make sure everything is taken down. Queen is tanking the Eagle right now and a couple of uh, Expo shots and the Arch Tower. But now the Dragon Riders and they are in. They are in. Is he going to freeze the Sweeper a couple of times or what exactly is going to be the plan? That's the big question. Using the Headhunters to get into the base, taking down the King as well. Using the rage over there. There's a ton of damage right now. Everything is messy. Everything is shooting everything. And the queen now, where is she going next? Is she going for the wall? Yes, that's exactly what she's going to do. Yes, one freeze left. Yes, one invisibility spell left. And guys, this is looking so good for him. He has a dragon inside the uh, inside the slammer to just make sure the cleanup is getting started right away. He has one minute left as well. Queen ability left. Using that queen ability right now to take down the back end air defense as quickly as possible. To have those... Um, Dragon Rider staying alive and guys, I think this is going to be a 3 star. This is going to be a crushing 3 star for Juicy P and this means they're going to win 14 to 13 against No Legs. This was such a close match. I think No Legs had everything in their own, own hands. They can't be mad at all. Like just starting your queen earlier on the last attack would have been already the difference maker. And uh, well on this one, he's getting the 3 star in and this means 14 to 13. Such an awesome match. I hope everyone liked that. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys back tomorrow for the next one. Until then, see ya and bye bye.